is energy. Everything's energy. Everything vibrates at a different speed. Stay with me here for a moment. What we're talking about here is energy. Now, while the energy is in the vibratory rate it's in, in that glass, we're going to call it water. And we call it water because it's vibrating at a physical or a corporeal state. If you were to add heat to that energy that we call water, you wouldn't call it water anymore. Then you would change the terminology that you would use. It would be the same energy, but it would be moving faster in a higher speed of vibration. Then we would call it steam or vapor. And we would call the energy steam or vapor because it's not in a physical vibration. It's now moved into what we call an astral vibration. If we were to continue to add heat to that energy that we now call steam, you wouldn't call it steam any longer. You would call it air, ether, or gas. And that's because it's not in an astral vibration any longer. It's moved into now what we call an etheric vibration. But every level, it's the same energy. Now, as we take a look at this, we're going to let these lines represent levels of vibration. Or, as we more commonly refer to them, as frequencies. And you know, each frequency is hooked up to the one above and the one below. There's no line of demarcation where one stops and the other starts. See, every frequency, it's like the colors of a rainbow. As they fit together, there's no place where one color stops and the other starts. They're all joined together. Now, you're never going to see that with something you call sight. Sight is a physical sensory factor. You have to go to one of your higher faculties and you develop this through understanding. You start to understand. So do you see, the part of us that we cannot see and the part we can see is all the same. This is just the flip side of the coin of this. Spirit always manifests through its polar opposite. We have the ability right here to tap in to this great power that I choose to refer to as spirit, and we can tap in with an intellect, and we can cause this power to literally move into form into something we call an idea. That idea must literally move into something we refer to as results. You see, both science and theology clearly indicate nothing is created or destroyed. The only thing you can do is cause it to change. Now, this particular program is about prosperity. And when we think of prosperity, money plays a very large role. But of course, so do relationships, and so does the health of our body. But let's go back and think about money for a moment. Here, if we can't destroy it, if heat will cause the energy that we call water to move into an etheric state, I would imagine heat would cause what we call money to move into an etheric state. And there it goes. Now, where is it? You say it's gone, it's not gone, still here. You see, you'll never see it on the level it's on now with your physical sensory factor sight. But if you use your intellect and develop understanding, you'll know that it's still here. What we want to do is cause it to move into form. Now, that's just about as bizarre as anything you'll ever hear <laughs> to some people's ears. But I'm going to tell you, it's just as true as anything you'll ever hear if you understand natural laws. And what I'm talking about is moving your mind into a higher vibration, developing a higher consciousness, and you can literally attract all the good that you want. You see, money is literally attracted to us, or it's repelled. Now, in the first 27 years of my life, I can assure you that I was not magnetized to that green energy. It used to stay away from me. And now it just keeps coming to me. What did he say in this book? Right in the start of it. He said, when money starts coming, it'll come so... And he told me about a doctor in San Antonio, Texas, Dr. Thruman Fleet. He started the concept therapy movement. He said he attempted to teach the healing arts and he ran into a problem. He said the medical profession that he was a part of were te treating symptoms or effects. They were not treating causes. And he said, if you're ever going to enjoy health, you must treat the whole person. Now, that's called holistic healing. 
How many of you are familiar with Dan? When we walk into that office where the broadloom is up to our cheeks and there's a great big oak desk and a battery of secretaries, that person is not that much better than you are. I don't care how big their car is, how much money they've got in the bank. I don't care how pretty they are. They're no better than you and they're no better than me. See, our problem is we have been living strictly with our sensory factors and never with our higher level of understanding. If a person's skin is a different color, we say they're different. If a person lives on the other side of an imaginary line, we say they're different. If a person speaks a different language, we say they're different. If a person is a different sex, we say they're different. Are they? No. They appear different to our sight. But when we develop a higher understanding, we're going to find out that we're all the same. And when we start to grasp that, then we can start to take action on the results we want. As we see a person getting better results, we can watch and see how they're getting them, and then we can do what, we're, what they're doing. Napoleon Hill says it pays to know how to buy knowledge. I'm going to tell you the best money you have ever invested is in this seminar. And I'm not saying that because I'm selling it or I'm done. And I'm not saying that because John Sellner to John's done. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that because I've studied thousands of seminars, and what we've done is take the very best out of them all and put them in this. When this was introduced to you early this morning, this was advertised as the most effective personal development seminar in the world today. It is, so far as I know. And I'm going to tell you, I've been to a lot of them. And it is because we give you a picture and then we show you how to change things. Well, Dr. Fleet said, if we're going to see health, we're going to have to give a person an image of the other side of their personality. And he said, since no one's ever seen the mind, I'm going to make a picture of the mind. Now, he said, let this represent the mind. Then he said, let this represent the thing that we've given all of our attention to now, up till now, the body. And he says, it's this thing here that moves into action and causes the results that we get. If we're going to change what we do, or if we're going to change our behavior, we're definitely going to have to change what's going on in here. If we're going to change what's going on in here, we're going to have to understand how it functions. And as he pointed out, there are two <coughs> sections to the mind, joined together, but different in their method of operation. And he referred to this as the conscious mind and this as the subconscious mind. Now, if you look on page six, the day Leland Bell Van de Waal drew that on the opposite side of a placemat in the coffee shop of the Skyline Hotel on Dixon Road in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, I'm going to tell you my life changed. I've put that drawing on the board thousands and thousands of times and periodically when I do, I hear people snicker. But I'm going to tell you, if they stick around, they don't snicker for long. Because what it does, it starts to trigger all kinds of light in their mind. You've heard, let there be light, let there be a higher consciousness, let there be an awareness. Well, what we've given you here is a picture to start working with. It's not my picture. It's not even Thruman Fleet's. It's our picture. The second you've got it in your mind, it's yours. No one can lay claim to something like this, but we can all use it. And we are all the same. I don't care how different you may appear to be to the person beside you, you and the person beside you are exactly the same. Now, it's understanding of how this functions that makes it different. Now, if you'll flip over 